Marley from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Wednesday, May 17th. So today we will see the moon in Aries go void, of course, at 5.11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll be locking into this Taurus energy at 8.29 a.m. So we are preparing for the new moon in Taurus taking place on the 19th at the 28th degree, which means that we have a couple of days to actually move through this Taurus energy before actually reaching that peak potent energy of the new moon in Taurus, which, by the way, going to slam the door shut on the eclipse energy shove us back into our physical bodies and give us an opportunity to kind of open up our eyes see the ever-changing landscape that took place through eclipse and retrograde season and definitely get to work on bringing forth new elements into form into creation that we've identified through eclipse and retrograde season need to actually change, need to actually transform. We are definitely in an adjustment period. We just had Jupiter move into Taurus energy late last evening. Well, midday yesterday, let's say, but the effect that I'm going to say oomph was definitely felt in the, I'm going to say, later hours of the day here yesterday, moving into the energy here today. There is so much earth energy built up at this particular point in time. This is why we're feeling heavy. This is why we're feeling weighted. This is why we are very focused on our physical bodies and our physical realms. And of course, we need to reach that peak energy, that potent energy with the new moon in Taurus before we're actually going to have some of that weight, some of that heaviness actually be alleviated. So there are 10 different aspects here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The moon still in Aries energy is going to make an interaction with the sun. The sun, of course, in Taurus energy. And anytime these two luminaries are coming together, there's an overlap. The moon, again, mostly represents our emotions, our intuition, our unconscious selves, and very connected to the past, while the sun is connected to our life force energy, our vitality, if you will, our consciousness, our awareness. And in Taurus energy, we should have been really focused on what it is that we need to build, what it is that we need to create in order to have safety and security and stability and happiness and joy and pleasure in our day-to-day -day lives. However, as you may know, this Taurus season has not been a typical Taurus season due to the eclipse and retrograde energies, which means that we haven't really been building new elements. We've been reconstructing, deconstructing the old. And that is a very needed step in this particular process, because as you well know, we're moving into some changing times here where we are going to see major topics, major themes, major shift take place in our physical realms. Our goal is to build a life, create a life that not only looks good, but feels good in alignment with our soul space, with our new, I'm going to say formed wisdom, formed awareness, formed knowledge. So this overlap is going to illuminate for us where it is that we are cutting the cords, where we are that we are kind of burning some bridges with that Aries energy, especially emotionally, we're burning through the cords, burning through those connections so that we have a space to actually kind of sit in and figure out what it is that we need to create in this beautiful space that's going to add to our safety, our security, our happiness and our joy. Well, the moon in Aries goes ahead and interacts with Neptune and its place of power in Pisces energy in such a way that puts us in a situation where we're kind of confused, we're seeking motivation, we're seeking inspiration, we're seeking signs and validation from the cosmos, from the universe, whatever it is that you want to call it, in order for us to feel confident with the changes in our inner realm that we're debating on making so that we have that support, we have that encouragement, we have that validation, that confirmation that we're on the right, on the right path, that we're on the right page, if you will on what it is that we want to change, what it is that we want to transform, and of course, what it is that we want to bring to life. Now, the confusion is necessary in order for clarity to kind of follow suit in its place. And typically speaking, we're not going to see things clearly until probably June, but with this new moon in Taurus kind of taking the fragmented 
uh, sense of self, you know, our heads have been in one place, our hearts have been in another, we've been disassociated with our physical body. We've had all of these fragments of self just kind of floating through these timelines of eclipse and retrograde season. This is why we're waiting for the new moon in Taurus to kind of like shove us back into our physical bodies and get in that alignment, get recalibrated. It's what we've been working on through this eclipse and retrograde season. And we're definitely going to feel shoved back into our physical bodies. Is it going to feel good? Likely not. Are we going to understand right away? Probably not. But it is going to act as the pivot point, as the changing point, if you will, on where it is that we're going to start making some sense out of some of these topics and themes that have popped off. And even more than that, we're going to be gaining a lot of clarity in moving forward. The moon in Aries, before it goes ahead and goes void, of course, is going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Mars, its ruler. Mars, of course, in Cancer energy. We can't wait to wrap up these final days of Mars being in Cancer energy, of course, anticipating moving into Leo energy on the 20th. So the day after the new moon in Taurus and the day before Gemini season. What an interesting time to have Mars god of war ruling over our physical energy our drive our passions our desires even our anger wrap up what has been a very stalled out energy stalled out time in this cancer energy yeah we probably realize where it is that we have to build better bridges better boundaries in our lives in order for us to get back to the basic needs of taking care of ourselves. but other than that we haven't accomplished too much with mars in cancer energy so having the moon and Mars kind of come together in this conflict, definitely going to illuminate us to some agitation, to some frustration, where it is that we're feeling restless, where it is that we're kind of feeling out of sorts, where we're kind of tired of being stalled out and blocked and challenged in making any kind of efforts. But we need to recognize where this anger is festering from because that is essentially where we've been doing ourselves a disservice. We only get angered when we're not in alignment, we get angered when boundaries are tested, but that should be a mirroring effect on where it is that we haven't had strong enough boundaries and allowed other people to kind of test them to cross them. We need agitation and frustration and anger in our lives to show us where it is that we're, we've outgrown certain situations and that a change absolutely is needed in moving forward. So if you are acting as your observer, higher self, you will kind of see where the agitation and frustration and anger is being triggered and you should follow that back to a primary root cause on what it is that you've outgrown that you're having a hard time detaching from and where it is that you have to make a little bit of a boss up move emotionally speaking in order to arrive at the place within you where you're actually prepared to cut the cord and to do whatever needs to be done to leave these fragmented energies of the things that you've outgrown actually in the past so we can move on. Once the moon actually goes void, of course, if things get shaky, things get uncertain, things get very unstable, we will have the moon while void still in this Aries energy, make a positive interaction with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, money, who is in this cancer energy as well, kind of bringing up all the feels and illuminating some inner child wounds illuminating some parental authority wounds as well. And all of this is to kind of mirror back and show us and illuminate where it is that we have to get down to the nitty gritty of just kind of giving ourselves the basic care, the basic needs, because many of us haven't been doing that. And so we do have to build new routines and foundations on how it is that we plan on addressing the mind, body, and soul so that we can essentially create a space, a safe place for us in our inner realm, in our physical realm, without having to depend on other people to try and support us and encourage us and make us feel all the things that we need to be making ourselves feel on the inside. This is very much a a solo journey of kind of meeting our own needs and filling our own voids and healing our own wounds without looking to other people to take part in that particular process. So the moon locks into this Taurus energy, as I previously mentioned, 829 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. About a half hour later, we have the moon coming up to, sitting next to, conjunct 
with Jupiter, who is fresh in this Taurus energy. And may I just remind you that as happy as we should all be to have Jupiter kind of grace this Taurus energy after 12 years, um, we immediately get into a tension, a conflict with Pluto here at the zero degree retrograde in the Aquarius energy. We'll talk about that in just a second, but just understand that we're not really going to even understand the benefits, the direction, the actions needed um, that Jupiter's transit in Taurus is going to lead us into for the next year until we kind of get into about the end of the first week of June, the beginning of the second week of June, when we kind of loosen the grip between this Jupiter and Pluto square, which I'll talk about here in a second. But the moon kind of, you know, bumping into Jupiter. Uh, and again, Jupiter is about growth and expansion, about abundance and blessings. He tends to magnify, turn the volume all the way up on whatever it is that we're thinking and feeling. And this could definitely go a couple of different ways. Um, I would hope that we could lean in to feeling very confident feeling very clear on what it is that we need to do. I would hope that we are acting from a grounded, logical, practical approach on kind of refitting our vision, our dream to what is actually possible. I would hope for the higher vibrations and frequencies, but let's be real here. Uh, we got a lot going on this week and the overlap of the cycles and patterns that are ending yet awaiting beginning as well and the square popping off between Jupiter and Pluto, it's tough. There's a lot of intensity here. So it could go the other way and we could just feel so freaking overwhelmed that we're in a state of paralysis and we could feel so much pressure to take action and to make moves and to transform. And of course, we're not being supported to doing that. We could feel like the weight of the world on our shoulders and we could be low in self-esteem. We could be low in confidence. We could be just overall just kind of stunted in our growth if you will um all of this is going to be rapidly changing as we kind of move through the next couple of weeks but it is going to be a little bit of a tension point for the next couple of weeks until we can get out of this square speaking of the square the moon goes ahead and squares pluto so this is kind of like um i'm gonna say a lot of funk a lot of darkness uh, reason being Pluto, of course, the great transformer himself, he does a, a little bit of a ditty in our psyche. He wants to kind of peel back the layers of our memories, of our thoughts, of our narrative, our emotions. He wants to remind us where it is that we have lacked boundaries in the past, where it is that we gave power away to other people, where it is that we allowed other people to have too much control over our lives, over our circumstances. And basically we need to examine our fears and our doubts and in our insecurities and our negative narratives and our limiting beliefs, because all of that is preventing us from truly aligning with the path, with the mission, with the purpose that requires us to push forward. But we do have to reframe a couple of things going on in our inner realm before we're going to be prepared to engage the physical body to take action and make the moves that are going to mirror back to us what we've already kind of arrived at and realized within ourselves. So a square is never fun. It's conflict, it's tension. And Pluto is here to peel back the layers of the not so nice thoughts and memories and emotions and experiences and circumstances in order for us to rewrite the script and turn that pain into a source of power. But of course, we have to sit in the funk. We have to feel it in order to heal it. And that particular part of the process just is not that much fun. The moon is going to come up to bump into and conjunct the true node, the north node, if you will. And then Mercury, because of course, all of these little planets I shouldn't say little planets, but all of these planets, Jupiter, the true node, Mercury, they're all in the very early degrees of Taurus energy. And so, you know, we have a lot of Taurus energy coming at us right now. And so with the moon moving through Taurus, we're going to bump into all these very important aspects. The moon kind of bumping into the true node is giving us a little bit of a peek on where it is that we want to go forward, where it is that we are growing, where it is that we are healing, where it is that we are coming up with new ideas and how it is that we're going to kind of create a new path in our future realms. And then we bump into Mercury, who is fresh in its direct position, thankfully, but still very much in post retrograde fog, which means that we're still not kind of thinking clearly and our heart and our head are trying to get on the same page, but we haven't even realized what it is that we don't even know yet. And there's still information and details that 
is kind of being hidden away from us that we're not even aware of that is being hidden away from us. And we need that information, those details in order to make a well-informed decision, especially with the plans, with the strategy, with the calculations that we need to be formulating within ourselves right now on the path that we are looking to actually take action on. But of course, we're not in a time of action. We're in a time of thinking about the action. And so this is going to be like uh, a little bit of a small window of aha moments of like things clicking, of things making sense, of arriving at a solution, at arriving at a decision, if you will. There's still a lot to process. It's not going to feel like we have all the answers, but we're definitely piecing things together. The moon is then going to sextile with Saturn. So Saturn's the Lord of Karma over there in the Pisces energy, trying to wrap up a 30 year cycle by deconstructing and dismantling the old falsehoods, the old lies, the old delusions, the old belief system. Um, and that is all just to kind of clear space out in order for us to build a much stronger foundation of belief, a much stronger, I'm going to say spiritual practice or belief practice, whatever it is that you do. Uh, we are kind of illuminating where it is that we have been disillusioned in the past. And of course, the the moon sex tilings, the beautiful energy with Mr. Saturn, the Lord of Karma ruling over our roles and responsibilities, our structures and foundations. We are starting to see where it is that we are kind of being encouraged to boss up um, to no roles and responsibilities because, of course, we're entering into new timelines. We're entering into new soul contracts, and that requires a different version of us. And that version of us starts with the emotional stability and strength and certainty that we have to kind of get at before we can actually go ahead and take actions in our external realm to follow through with whatever it is that we have to boss up to. The last thing that we have going on here today is Jupiter squaring with Pluto. So I did talk about this uh, in all the forecasts. So the 2023 energy forecast that I put out at the beginning of the year where I chopped up all of the, the months and went through all of the major astrology. You can hear me talk about it there. You can hear me talk about it in May's energy forecast. You can hear me talk about it in this week's ascension forecast. I think I've rambled on about it in most of the Zodiac forecasts for May as well. Um, basically, we are in a very interesting time. Anything at a zero degree is a fresh start, is a clean slate, is a new karmic chapter. We have Jupiter, the planet of growth and expansion at zero degrees in Taurus energy, setting us up for a very very beneficial rewarding year as long as we can get our asses in gear and we can actually do instead of just sitting around thinking of doing we have the opportunity to build some very solid foundations and structures that will reap the rewards for the next 12 year cycle we have that opportunity pluto of course is the great transformer himself the god of the underworld who rules over death and rebirth because that's how transformation takes place at a zero degree in Aquarius energy. He's retrograde though, of course. So we're doing the internalized journey in that psyche in order to really illuminate for us where it is that we're blocking ourselves from making the kind of progress and landing in the dream and the vision and the, in the goal, if you will, that we desire to be at. So Jupiter at a zero degree in Taurus, Pluto retrograde at a zero degree in Aquarius. We do have an opportunity to create new things here. This is a very karmically divinely scripted opportunity for growth for change for transformation but this is a square this is a conflict this is a tension point so we are being put in a pressurized situation right now where we know we have to grow where we know we have to change where we know we have to transform especially our physical realm but we're not being gifted the opportunity, the encouragement to actually make those changes, to take those actions. What we're being kind of positioned to do is to face our opposition. Opposition. What, you know, what are we talking about here? Well, first of all, we're, we're taking on too much. And I think that the Taurus energy that we're now moving into with Jupiter is going to help us to see where it is that we have to kind of simplify our lives, get back to the bare basics of what it is that we need, what it is that makes us happy. It's kind of a time to slow down and smell the roses, so to speak. Um, but we got too much going on. So we're going to kind of see the opposition in our lives, like asking too much of us or needing to be at four places in one time or understanding that we have too many irons in the fire, uh, too much, let's say, responsibility on our plate, not leaving enough time for fun, for peace, for refreshment. We are, again, Jupiter tends to kind of lay things on a 
little bit thick, right? Uh, he he turns the volume all the way up and, and magnifies things and tends to exaggerate some situations. So it's going to feel like we have a lot going on. And of course, Pluto is here to push us into our power, but we only seem to recognize our power when we're put into situations to realize how strong we are. And of course, that is opposition. So we might find opposition with challenging beliefs or having other people block us in our path. Or, you know, we could have uh, situations pop off that totally change the way that we believe in ourselves or what is possible for us or the dream or the vision that we were looking to manifest. Either way, there's, there's like a huge conflict taking place internally and externally. And that's why I've said to, to you all many times, if you can avoid the urgency, the crisis point, the impulsivity coming up right now to take action, to make a move, to pull the trigger on a decision or a commitment, if you can resist that until at least the first week of June, you're going to be met, bet, much better off for it. And like I mentioned in the Ascension forecast, I know that we are all not put in positions where we can just wait until the stars actually support us in doing things. But if at all possible, you definitely should, because the opposition is coming from all corners. If that's why you're feeling attacked right now, that's the opposition why we're talking about. Why are you being attacked? Well, because you carry a certain amount of light, which carries a certain amount of knowledge, which carries a lot of power. And that power is able to create a certain amount of change. And so we talked about this, about feeling like you're constantly being attacked. And that is because you are here to change the world. You are here to change not only your world and not only the people's world that connects with your world, but it reverberates out into the collective consciousness. And so, yes, there's going to be a lot of frustration. There's going to be a lot of urgency. There's going to be a want, need and desire to just kind of, you know, say, screw it and cut the cords with anyone that gives us any kind of conflict. But we also have to understand that conflict is the way that we grow. So we don't want to, we don't want to avoid conflict. We don't want to avoid opposition, although many people will go to great lengths in order to do that. What we want to do is see what's popping up for us, seeing the opposition, seeing where the conflict is kind of being created and really taking a good look at A, why, why it is that this opposition is, is taking place, what within us is creating this, where it is that we're holding the light and the power in order to attract these darker force oppositional energies. And then secondly, like to figure out how to rise above, you know, the Taurus energy is about us being grounded, about us being so sure, safe and secure within ourselves, within our own actions, our own belief that we're not swayed by anything coming at us from the external world. We're definitely going to have multiple opportunities to see this front and center over the next couple of weeks. But this is about the wisdom. Jupiter, you know, again, gives us the wisdom. And we've been through enough tough love life experiences thus far to tap into a new level of awareness, knowledge, and, and wisdom that we can ground that out. We can anchor that in, I'm going to say, the situations and circumstances where we're seeing adversity and opposition and, and confrontation come at us, we can rise above. There is a lesson here. And this is a lesson in power and a lesson in strength within yourself. Are you going to let outside forces actually get you down? Are you going to let the outside forces shift what you believe in, what you're able to create for yourself? This is a time for us to really rise up, the boss up in all kinds of different ways and just be mindful that over the course of the next couple of weeks, this particular square between Jupiter and Pluto is happening in the background of our lives, of our circumstances, and will be triggering any aspect in our unconscious programming in order to bring that to our awareness so that we can gain power and control over it.